Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. Paying $65 for 0.1 XRP as an XRP buyer. Don't stop watching this video until you know everything there is to know about the end of the month gift of 100 XRP tokens. Today's video will focus on the prospects for XRP. You won't want to miss a second of this, so give your full attention. If you're new here, you can enter the giveaway by subscribing to the channel and activating post alerts by clicking the bell. Note that this is not a video offering financial guidance. Let's talk about the Ripple's cost model, which will completely astound you because the calculations will prove that XRP is prohibitively expensive. Visa's networks should be considered first. Visa's network processes 192.5 billion transactions each year generating $29.3 billion in net income on a payments volume of $11.6 trillion. Let's return to Ripple's cost estimate, which predicts annual savings of around $1.4 million if 365,000 transactions are processed with a total value of $336 million. That is a really large figure, no doubt about it. Visualize this with a transaction volume of 192 billion visas, the maximum allowed by the cost model. However, the yearly savings cost is $328 million after transaction volume reaches 100 million. It's a lot to hear, but we're just dealing with modest amounts in a relatively small number of transactions, so it's all right. Obviously, that's not the end of it. Getting that number up to 5 trillion would result in a yearly savings of $4.2 billion. Wow, that's a huge sum of money. Revenue at Rural Bank of Canada has climbed by around 10% to 13% over the past few years, and is projected to reach $45 billion by 2020. Adding another $4.2 billion would bring the total revenue close to $50 billion. To begin, let's examine the XRP Ledger's payment metrics. If you look at the numbers and choose to view the payment history from the previous year up to the present, you'll notice that the range is anything from 100,000 to 400,000, and even as high as 500,000. If we're lucky. There are also significant peaks on specific days, with November 21, 2021 being the highest at WET with a value of 5,008,726. ,000 Let's discuss about the burning of XRP right now. Their website states that the first ledger had 100 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 XRP and that no additional XRP can be generated. Sending XRP to an unkeyed address will result in its immediate destruction. There is no need to worry about deflation because XRP is not infinite. Destroying all XRP would take at least 70,000 years at the current rate because the value of XRP and associated costs are flexible in response to market fluctuations in supply and demand. The technical unit of measure for XRP is the drop, which is equal to 001 XRP. All XRP quantities must be stated and drawn from XRP in order to use the rippled APIs. 1 XRP, for instance, equals a million drops. We'll be dissecting just this. For some background, the current network minimum for a normal transaction is 0.1 XRP, or 10 drops. It's important to remember that spikes in load can cause it to rise over normal levels. To give you an example, deleting an account will set you back 2 million drops, or double your RP. A Twitter user who devotes 24 hours to cryptography recently tweeted that the entire supply of XRP was 99,998,062,491,36 days ago. As of the end of April, there are a total of 99,988,964,530,897,995. He concluded his tweet with the following, that's roughly 97, 961 XRP burned and gone forever in 36 days, with about 2,800 burned per day, which according to them goes perfectly with the below 24 hours burn rate. There is insufficient XRP. The crypto buff also made a startling proclamation. Let's pretend 2,800 XRPS are going to be consumed daily. 
a total of 41 million XRP would be destroyed, or 2,800 multiplied by 40 years. Now that 2,800 times 70 years have passed, 71 million XRP have been consumed. A definition, please. It is predicted that if this occurs, the value of XRP will skyrocket. Let's analyze the components of XRP equals $1 now. To break it down even further, that's 2 million sprinkles, or the number 8. And every last drop. About $1.04 it costs $3.160 for every 7,373 XRP. 5 times RP equals $1.50. In terms of value, RP is negligible, 5 cents for 1 XRP. If XRP were valued at 50 cents, then don't care if XRP is currently trading for $50.02. If XRP were $100, then even at that rate, 2 million RP is worth $100. It's not 2 million, but rather, 2 million drops. As a result, the value of 08 XRP will rise to around $1.40, there are 703 cents in $36.08. 1 XRP is $5 in RP, 1 X is equal to either 50 cents or 100,000 drops. At $50, a drop of 100,000 XRP will be worth $5,737. There would be a $36.86 value for 300 drops. Let's now examine the plan for federated side chains on the XRP blockchain. The blog claims that over the past nine years, the XRP community has been working to improve the XRP ledger and make it more innovative. Decentralized finance has been growing at an exponential rate, and as a result, smart contract capabilities have been one of the most desired additions to the XRP ledger among developers and contributors. DFI Since 2019, the number of DFI developers has increased by 110%, and this trend is expected to continue well into 2021. However, Ripple disclosed that it has long opposed additions to the XRP ledger that could detract from its primary functionality as a payments ledger. This is why they proposed the federated side chains for the XRP ledger, an approach that allows the best of both worlds and makes it easier for developers to add new features. The XRP ledger can keep its current minimal and efficient feature set while supporting native smart contracts that work smoothly with XRP. Experimentation and specialization are two further benefits of federated sidechains. So that programmers may experience the efficacy of the XRPL on a separate container that functions as its own blockchain. Consider the possibility of expanding into related areas, such as additional features. By streamlining the features of an XRPOS to meet the needs of a particular application, or by establishing a separate network for a permission blockchain, this is possible. It's possible that federated sidechains will make this a reality. The plan is for each sidechain to operate independently of the XRP ledger, with its own transaction log and distributed ledger. The federation mechanism makes these chains sidechains by facilitating the transfer of XXRP and issued tokens between them. XRP could serve as the main currency of federated sidechains. If so, then the federation system might be used to transfer XRP from XRPL to the sidechain. Then, XRP would be usable on the sidechain in the same ways it is currently on the main chain. XRP could be transferred between the two chains by anyone. Another option is for a sidechain to use a locally created asset. In this way, XRP might be transferred to and from the issued asset on the sidechain by users with accounts on both ledgers. To put its features into action, XRPL would use the XR Please Integrated Decentralized Exchange to provide training for federated assets that were brought onto the platform. The DEX XRP that is imported onto the sidechains will be utilized to provide liquidity on the exchange's combined trading platforms. However, there are three prerequisites for this tactic. In the first place, making even minor adjustments to the functioning of the active XRP ledger network requires the construction of a new piece of software or the federate. 
And third, modifying the XRPL server program to work on a sidechain by providing new functionality. XRPL wouldn't provide these functions in full. Please explain why federated sidechains are beneficial. If you have this software, you can create a parallel blockchain to the XRP ledger and join it. New possibilities such as native DeFi and smart contracts are made available to developers. Blockchain features that are pre-implemented in the side chains can potentially be developed and released by developers. Immediate benefits of federated side chains for developers include horizontal scaling, as side chains can have their own fee system, reserve system, and transaction capacity. Successful features may even be deployed to the XRPL mainnet in the future. If you want to make a system where thousands of people can have XRP, you don't have to be the custodian or put everyone's accounts on XRPL. Since the XRP ledger doesn't require any changes, there's also a low risk involved. The adjustments that would be beneficial are, at best, minor. The minimal effort required is another plus. Since the XRP distributed ledger is powerful, robust, and sustainable, anyone who needs or wants to experiment with a blockchain can do so immediately. Finally, a comprehensive plan that allows for the gradual integration of user-requested additions. This would be a never-ending supply of brand new options and features. Guys, I'm afraid that's all we can offer you for now. How do you feel about XRP? Participate and share your thoughts in the discussion thread. Please show your appreciation for this video by giving it a big thumbs up if you found it entertaining. Also, if you want to be notified the next time we release a video covering the latest XRP and cryptocurrency news, make sure to hit the subscribe button and enable notifications below the video. See you in the next video, bye.